this clip, I will show how to use our toolkit, then present a few demonstration plans. I am going to start the web services to receive requests from browsers. First, the cell service provider publishes data sets with privacy protection by specifying the data set and the privacy budget. The higher the budget, the less privacy. The other parameters will be demonstrated shortly. This step basically constructs an in-memory sanitized data of the selected data set with the specified privacy level on the server. Second, the admin selects a sanitized data set. You can see some statistics of the selected data set are automatically computed, and the map is panned to the region of the data set. For now, I am interested in Yelp data. Third, the admin can choose a particular heuristic as well as its parameters. Note that the default parameters are in sync with the server, so when you change these parameters, the server are updated accordingly. Fourth, there are three ways to request a task. The first way and also my favorite is to click on a map location. The second way is to use some provided samples from MediaQue. The last way is to provide latitude and longitude via a text box. In terms of notations, we use red markers as locations of the tasks and yellow markers as locations of the notified workers. The green ones represent the workers who accept the task and fulfill work request. Admin can click on a cell to see detailed statistics, typically the utility of the cell, the distance to the task, and the noisy worker count. The admin can also click on the circle to view the number of top counts and the total number of notified workers. Now, I am going to present a few demonstration scenarios. The first scenario shows the effect of privacy budget on the number of notified workers. Because of the fact that the smaller the privacy budget, the more privacy. As the budget decreases from 1 to 0.1, our customized adaptive grid has larger grid cells. This results in a larger number of notified workers. The second scenario presents the effect of customized granularity on the size of geocast region. For the same data set and task request, customized adaptive grid has finer granularity, which is likely to result in smaller geocast region or smaller communication cost. The third scenario shows the dynamism of our task assignment algorithm. That is, workers are dependent of each other's in performing tasks. Each of them has a probability to perform an assigned task, which depends on its distance to the task. There can be many workers who accept the task, but we only select one of them based on fitness proportionate selection. You can see that every time we request the same task, the result is different. The green notification shows that task is performed, while the red notification indicates the task is not performed. Note that the number of notified workers, which are computed based on actual data, are always 13. The fourth scenario shows the effect of varying worker density on the size of geocast regions. Let me request some tasks at the downtown of Phoenix, Arizona, then some other tasks at the suburb area of Phoenix. You can see geocast regions obtained in the sparse suburb area is larger than the geocast regions obtained in the denser downtown area. This confirms that our customized adaptive grid adapts greatly to the density of worker locations. The fifth scenario shows the impact of alternative heuristics on the size and the shape of the geocast region. The compactness-based heuristic tries to form the geocast region with balanced shape, while the utility-based heuristic tends to select the populated grid cells first, which would result in smaller number of cells selected. The sixth scenario presents the effect of varying other parameters in geocast region. By enabling partial cell selection, the algorithm is allowed to select a subcell, which would reduce the number of notified workers. By reducing the expected utility from 0.9 to 0.5, the obtained geocast region is smaller. By switching the acceptance rate function from linear to Ziffian, the geocast region is enlarged. On the other hand, as we increase the maximum acceptance rate of the workers, the geocast region becomes smaller, because a smaller number of workers is required to achieve the expected utility. Finally, as we decrease the wireless range, the hop count increases proportionately. In the final scenario, we shows the feature of moving worker locations. Notice that you can see only a few markers in the geocast regions while the actual number of enclosed workers is 18. This is because some workers have the same locations. Now, I am going to start simulation, in which all workers move toward a random direction by a predefined step. The heat map of the updated data set shows this movement. When I click on stop simulation button, the current snapshot of the worker locations are uploaded to the server, and a new PSD is constructed. This step takes a while until you get the successful notification. Now I am going to try the same set of tasks so that you can see the worker locations are now pretty much distinct. 